Welcome to the Critical Hour. We're coming to you from the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., here on Radio Sputnik. I'm your host, political scientist, author, and nationally syndicated columnist, Dr. Wilmer Leon. I'm joined here by my co-host, political analyst, Garland Nixon. Thank you, Wilmer. For the next two hours, we will explore and analyze the salient news stories that are impacting the global village in which we live. Sputnik reports madness. Macron ripped for not ruling out sending troops to Ukraine. As Paris hosted a meeting where members of the EU and NATO discussed the situation in Ukraine, announcing new measures to deliver munitions to the Kiev regime, French President Macron said that sending Western ground troops to Ukraine is a possible option. For insight into this, we turn to our first guest. He holds the John Jay and Rebecca Moore's Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. He's one of the most prolific writers of our time. His latest books are entitled, I Dare Say, A Gerald Horn Reader and Acknowledging Radical Histories. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, welcome back. Thank you for inviting me. Quote, there is no consensus today to send in official endorsed manner troops on the ground, but in terms of dynamics, nothing can be ruled out, Macron said, adding, we will do everything that we must so that Russia does not win, end quote. Dr. Horn, is this a depopulation campaign that Macron is championing or just more dangerous rhetoric? Because by all measures, by the analysts that I talk to, when he says Russia can't win, they've already won. Dr. Gerald Horn. Well, I think this has to be taken very seriously because I think what's happening is that the North Atlantic capitalist countries find themselves in a bind. They find themselves cornered. They made an ill-advised wager with regard to this caper in Ukraine, assuming, as Mr. Biden once said, that the ruble would be converted to rubble in a matter of weeks following the Russian uh, special military oper operation of two odd years ago. But obviously, the ruble has not turned into rubble. In fact, what we're witnessing right now, and this has to be focused on, is a major shift in the global correlation of forces because what's happened is that Russia, under siege by the NATO countries, and reference here, the article in the Sunday New York Times that pointed out that at least since 2014, and I would argue before 2014, the CIA of the United States has operated about a dozen bases on the Ukraine-Russian border, chance with destabilizing Moscow. And in fact, there was spillover in terms of using Ukrainians to try to destabilize socialist Cuba as well. But with all of that energy and all of that misadventure, we see that it is coming to a screeching halt with regard to what's happening on the battlefield. And Europe finally has to face up to a reality it has ignored for centuries. I'm pointing to the fact that if you look at the demographics of the old continent, it's apparent that Russia is destined to be the major power on that continent. It has a population of about 150 million, number two, Germany, 82 million. It is blessed and endowed with natural resources, too numerous to mention, including oil, natural gas, uh, et cetera. And as well, Russia serves as the bridge between what is now the most affluent continent, speaking of the European Union, with a market of over 500 million, and of course, the People's Republic of China, with a population of 1.4 billion. And the change in correlation of forces that has been forced by the Ukrainian misadventure has Russia now turning towards an embrace of China with all of its resources, in fact. And so we see that the cheap Russian energy that helped to fuel the German economy 
is now going into China. And therefore, you see that German corporations, per the rules and regulations of the so-called free market, are now moving entire enterprises away from Germany and into China, and in fact, into the United States of America, too, which, of course, uh, has a certain uh, quota of uh, natural resources and energy as well. And so this has led to a fair amount of hysteria, as reflected in the ill-advised comments of President Macron. You see that hysteria today on the website of the New York Times, which predicts that the Chinese uh, electric vehicle manufacturer BYD, which, by the way, has as a major investor, uh, U.S. Uh, Oracle of Omaha, speaking of Warren Buffett, that it is poised to eat the lunch not only of Tesla, which, by the way, manufactures in China as well, but also the legacy auto manufacturers, including uh, Ford and General Motors. And so we see that the world is changing rapidly, and as a result, the capitalist countries are panicking. There's even this loose talk about seizing Russian assets that are found in the North Atlantic countries, which obviously will lead not only to tit-for-tat measures, that is to say Russia seizing European and North Atlantic assets found on their territory, but it'll also go a long way to making illegitimate the use of the U.S. dollar as a major reserve currency, because if I'm in Saudi Arabia, I have to believe that the the anti-Saudi and Islamophobic sentiment could lead to a seizure of Saudi assets in the North Atlantic countries as well. And the hysteria has been exacerbated by this talk coming from the Republican Party that is interpreted as being anti-NATO, which means that the countries like France and Germany will have to confront Russia on their own, perhaps without the assistance of Uncle Sam. And so with the European Union out on a limb, it's led to this hysteria, and I haven't even gotten to another internal point, which is that the change in correlation of forces also encompasses the point that Poland is no more than a cat's paw of Uncle Sam. Uh, Poland is spending astronomically on its military. At the same time, it has unresolved grievances with the Federal Republic of Germany, not to mention a lot all of its own for Ukrainian territory. And so we should expect more of the kinds of inflammatory remarks that Mr. Macron just uttered And I dare say that this will not save him from the kind of political battering he's taking in Paris uh, from both left and right. Um, Dr. Horn, you know, when I first heard that, I recalled, you know, because we cover this all the time, uh, Germany, their uh, military leadership recently saying, you know, if we got in a war, we about three or four days, we're out of ammo. I read about um, uh, a friend saying, you know, yeah, we're down like six, how- you know, mobile howitzers. Bottom line, country after country saying we're out. They're, they're, when it came to ammo, they bo- they only came up with a third of the amount that they said they wanted to go to Ukraine. So it would be kind of saying we can send our soldiers, but they're not really going to have any ammo or anything to fight with. No, Knowing that, my inclination was to think, they see this thing falling to be pieces and they're hoping maybe we can kind of bluff Russia a little bit because we know we're going to have to negotiate soon because it appears that the front line is falling apart. What do you think about that? Well, I think the idea of bluffing Russia is laughable at, at best. I think that Moscow has learned a very difficult lesson from the Minsk negotiations, the so-called Minsk Accords that they were being strung along, not least by Germany and the United States, giving Ukraine an opportunity to arm. And I don't think that this idea that somehow uh, Russia can be fooled again uh, is part of the laughable uh, thinking that obviously is characterizing the leadership of the European Union. Uh, If I were to advise Mr. Macron, I would recommend and urge that there be round-the-clock negotiations with Russia to try to salvage whatever can be salvaged with regard to this misadventure. 
rather than engaging in this bellicosity of talking about sending the flower of French youth to a certain death on the plains of Ukraine. So Zelensky was on CNN Sunday and basically begging uh, the West for more money and more weapons. And to Garland's point, well, they can send money, but they ha- they don't have weapons. So we we can all see the movie here. We can we can we know how the movie is going to end. And so what's the what's the play here? Z- uh, Zelensky continues to beg. You've got Joe Biden begging Congress. You've got um, what's his name in the Senate? The 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 Senate Majority Leader. Um, I, I forgot his name now. From New York, um, Hakeem Jeffries. No, no, no. The, in the Senate. Oh, Schumer. Chuck Schumer. Uh, begging. So everybody's begging. The well is dry. What's the play? Well, I think that we're witnessing a very frantic moment on the part of the North Atlantic leaders. As noted, their wager has gone awry. You saw a glimpse of that in the Munich Security Conference just concluding in Germany, where you saw the arrival not only of Vice President Harris, but also of Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, and as well the leader of Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky. And it was left to the Republican J.D. Vance to break the sobering news that it was unclear if the United States would be able to fund the Ukrainian caper uh, much longer. And that has been validated by this idea that Speaker Mike Johnson has been reluctant to bring to the floor of the House uh, the funding bill. And we should also state the obvious, which is that with the crisis in Gaza and with the Israeli lobby being one of the more potent forces on Capitol Hill, Uh, It is unavoidable that uh, Ukraine will be left out in the cold, not to mention the fact that with regard to the crisis uh, concerning Taiwan, that the U.S. ruling class as a whole is united on this idea that the road to destabilizing the Communist Party of China uh, runs through Taiwan, which means that funding for Taiwan also gets priority. And then there's the adjunct of the Israeli issue, which is destabilizing Iran, which also gets priority. And that leaves uh, Mr. Zelensky and his Ukrainian comrades far down on the totem pole, uh, which means that if they were a stock, you would profit by shorting it. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, thank you so much for your time. Greatly, greatly appreciate that analysis. And we look forward to having you again, having you back. Thank you.